All right, so I advertise this as hip class or describe it as hip class. Um, it's really butt class because we're going to work on two specific aspects of the hips, so just a little lingo. Um, when you're standing, this is hip extension, and when you bend at the hip, that's hip flexion, and when you take the leg back, that's hip extension also. Um, so the muscles that do the hip extension are the butt muscles and the hamstrings. So we're going to be working there. And then we're also going to work with external rotation, which is when we roll the femur out in the socket. The effect is that the foot turns out, but when we do that, we want to be thinking about what's happening in the hip socket. Um, and of course, we will also work with the abdominals, first and foremost, um, supporting the spine and bringing stability, against which we can move the hip. We'll come down into constructive rest pose to begin. Relaxing on the floor with the knees bent, feet in line with the sit bones. Arms wider than the mat, palms turned up, shoulder blades spread. Neck relaxed. Place something under the head, a little pillow or folded towel if the neck's not comfortable. And take a moment to just settle into the floor. Now since we're going to be talking about the hips, just as an observation, take your fingertips to the hip crease here and um, notice there are some muscles that may be quite tight there. The hip flexors tend to work overtime, these superficial hip flexors. Um, that's part of the reason that we want to work on the hip extension is the muscles in the back to um, give these guys in the front a break. Partly because we sit so much. So you can see we're kind of in a um, sitting position if we were upright. So the hip flexors often get very tight. And they sometimes are chronically engaged. Right now, yes, your hips are flexed, but we're not actively doing anything. So just feel your thumb along there and see how soft you can make that hip crease. There's a couple big tendons and we want to relax them as much as possible. One way to do that or to think about that is to imagine your thigh bones the way they're sinking down into the hip socket. You know how we settle our femoral heads, the arm bones into the shoulder socket? Same thing here, the femurs are just settling down and if it's really tight in the front of the hip, you can imagine a waterfall flowing down the front of your legs and settling into the pool of the pelvis. Let's continue settling into the constructive rest for a moment. And to bring a little more softness there, think of your back pockets and imagine them spreading wide apart. Just relaxing the belly. And then the inner core muscles, the muscles that support the relationship of the pelvis to the spine, they're really key, um, support the muscles at the base of the spine and around the interstec, inter, uh, the relationship between the lower back and the pelvis. Let's focus on those inner core muscles for a moment, finding the pelvic floor, which is anchored to the tailbone, the sit bones, and the pubic bone. Imagine a trying a diamond formed by those four points. And as you exhale, draw that diamond into the center. So it's a gathering inward motion towards the perineum and then pull the sphincters towards the crown of the head. And then relax that. Let's do that a couple times. See if as you do that, you can keep both the hip creases and the buttock muscles relaxed. So picture the diamond of the pelvic floor as you inhale. And exhale, gather it and really uh, focus your effort only at the pelvic floor. Try not to squeeze the buttocks. Try to keep the hip front, the front hip muscles soft. Pull into the center. Engage the sphincters. Pull up towards the crown of the head. We're still in a neutral pelvis. 
and then relax, soften. One more time, picture the diamond. And then with an exhale, gather the diamond into the center. Engage the sphincters, pull the perineum towards the crown of the head. And then relax. Then bring your attention up to the transverses. It's really important to visualize this coming all the way around. Um, it's not exactly um, true, but it's functionally true that the um, belt of the transversus supports us all the way around from the spine around to the front. So picture a big broad belt, picture those belts that um, people wear to support their back when they're lifting something heavy. You have that internally. And then as you exhale, pull it a little snugger. Start at the spine and imagine it pulling around across the hips and the waist and meeting beneath the belly button. And then relax back. And again, picture that big broad belt of support. And then gather it around, starting at the spine, moving out in each direction and wrapping it gently around the low torso and then soften. Now as we do this, we also want to try to keep the hip creases soft, the buttocks soft, and the spine and the pelvis um, still. We're not moving anything yet. One more time. Inhale, prepare for the transversus belt. And exhale, wrap it around. And then add your pelvic floor. There is all the low core support. So let's warm that up as we do our arm lifts, soften everything. We're maintaining our neutral pelvis and spine. Inhale, bring the arms up towards the ceiling. And with the exhale, engage the pelvic floor and the belt as you reach your arms back. Make sure that the pelvis doesn't rock and your low back stays in its neutral curve. Inhale, arms float up. Easy in the shoulders, and exhale, bring the arms back down to rest at the floor at your sides. Release the core work, and inhale, arms float up. Exhale, find the inner core and reach back. Again, pelvic floor and the belt of the transversus, stabilizing the lumbar curve and the pelvis. Inhale, the arms float up, stay easy in the sockets, and exhale, bring the arms back down to the sides, relaxing the core work, softening the arms down. One more time, inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, stabilize with the low core muscles and reach back. Inhale, bring the arms to the ceiling. And exhale, float the arms down to the sides. And let everything settle and relax. Okay, let's bring our attention to the oblique, warming them up, place the hands behind the head. Inhale, feel your ribs flare out. With your exhale, knit your front ribs together and then imprint the back ribs down into the mat. Keep your neutral lower back, just draw the back ribs down into the mat. And inhale, let the ribs flare. Exhale, knit the front ribs together and imprint the back ribs down into the mat, keeping your neutral lower back curve. And inhale, let them flare again. Well, then once again, exhale. As you knit the ribs, imagine them going on a diagonal to the opposite back pocket. Imprint the back ribs. And relax with the inhale. We'll add the inner core and go to a head lift. Inhale, prepare for the inner core. Exhale, pelvic floor, belt. Then ribs knit and imprint. Maintain your neutral and exhale, lift the head. And inhale, lower back down. Maintain that core work and exhale, lift again. We have the inner core and the obliques working. Inhale, lower back down. One more time, anchor and lift. And inhale, lower. Float the arms up towards the ceiling. Relax the shoulders, soften your neck. We're going to keep the arms here. Releasing the humeral heads down into the sockets, keeping the shoulders nice and easy. Use the inner core and the obliques to stabilize in our alternate leg lift. Inhaling, prepare for the inner core. Exhale, gather the pelvic floor, then the belt, and knit and imprint your ribs. Float your right foot up. Keep the pelvis still as you lift, and then lower. I know this is fundamental, and you've done it many times. Keep anchoring with the other side. 
Right, give it your full attention. We're going to move into a slightly different exercise from here, so I want you to do this one well. Engage the inner core, knit an imprint, and float the right foot up. And lower it back down, keeping the pelvis still, keeping the ribs knitting and imprinting back to the left side. And lower down, the shoulders are easy throughout. We'll do it one more time with each leg. Lift. And lower. And continue to anchor and stabilize. Left foot up. And lower. Good. We'll bring the hands behind the head. Feel the elbows open out wide. So notice your ribs are a little bit extended away from the floor. That's what that imprint is about. Inhale. As you exhale, find the pelvic floor, the belt. Knit and imprint the ribs. You should really feel your neutral spine and lift your head. We're going to maintain the neutral. And inhale, lift the right foot up. Exhale, flex your foot, extend the leg out, 45 degrees. Inhale, bend the knee, and re-anchor, lower your foot. Continue to stabilize and switch to the left side. Inhale, up. Exhale, flex, extend. Inhale, anchor as you bend the knee. Exhale, and lower. Back to the right side, keep the pelvis still. Inhale, up. Exhale, flex, extend. Inhale, and bend the knee. And anchor as you lower down. Keep steadying the pelvis. Keep the back ribs knitting and imprinting. Inhale, left up. Exhale, flex, extend. Inhale and bend the knee and re-anchor. Lower the foot. One more like that on each side. Keeping the inner core and the knitting and imprinting going. Pelvis is stable. Watch the transition back down to the floor and then to the left side. And then lower your head and relax for a moment. So now we're going to do a variation. That was in parallel position where we kept the knee joint or the, the um, thigh bone rotated in its parallel position. Now we're going to work with external rotation. I'd like you to place your thumbs on your low ribs and your fingers on the hip points. We want to feel that the pelvis stays steady as we start rotating the femur so that we don't also rotate the hips. We want to keep the pelvis as the stable base and rotate just the leg. So re-anchor, find that inner core, the ribs knitting and imprinting. Feel the stability of the pelvis as you inhale and lift your right foot up. Exhale, flex your foot and stretch the leg out long. Now we're going to point the toes making sure the pelvis stays steady. So reconnect with your belt, roll the leg out in the socket, take an external rotation with that right leg. That doesn't mean to drop your right hip. And then lower that externally rotated leg down towards the floor and lift it back up. And lower down and lift back up. It also doesn't need to go any wider. You're still in line with the hip joint, the heel is, but we have the uh, bone rolled out in the socket. We'll do that once more. Then come up, rotate to parallel, bend the knee, and lower the foot down, stay stable. Take a moment and relax. Make sure that you're in your neutral and then support it again with the inner core, the ribs knitting and imprinting. Take the left foot up. Extend the leg out long. You're in parallel now, point the toes and then roll the leg out in the socket and then lower down. And keep your neutral pelvis, keep your ribs imprinting, lift back up, stay in, turn out. You're still in line with the hip joint, and um, up and down and side to side. One more time. And then roll to parallel, bend the knee and re-anchor and lower back down. Let everything relax. Now, feel that hip crease. Um, you just pumped up those superficial hip flexors. If, if they're still engaged, see if you can soften into the floor. Think about that waterfall and your back pocket spreading. Release the tension there. And depending on your body, you may have a hard time releasing that tension. 
Um, that's one of the great things about the pelvic lift. So we're going to do a pelvic lift now. And you can feel how you're going to use the buttocks and the backs of the thighs. In fact, some of you um, may get a little reaction from the hamstring. If so, just come down a little sooner. So we're going to re-engage our inner core. And this time we're going to add a tilt of the pelvis. Pull the pubic bone into the belly button. Your ribs are knitting and imprinting. So we have a flat back. So can you already feel? Hamstrings, low belly is working. Now push up and you're going to start to feel the buttocks working as you stretch out the front of the thighs. Lengthen there and then come on back down. Roll down through the spine, tip the pelvis down, release. If you've got a hamstring stretch or cramp, you can just straighten the leg out. As it gets warmed up, it'll probably be more cooperative. Uh, I forgot to mention, if you have something behind your head, it's best to take that out when we do a pelvic lift. So let's start again with the inner core, the belt, the tilt of the pelvis to flatten the lower back, the ribs needing an imprinting and press into the feet and feel those big muscles, the gluteals, the external rotators, the hamstrings, all working as you lift up and roll back down. Coming down through the ribs, through the lower back, through the sacrum, and then releasing to neutral. And set it up one more time. Inner core, pelvic tilt, ribs knitting and imprinting, press into the feet, into a pelvic lift. And roll it back down. And release. Throw in our neutral spine. We're going to end inner core, knit an imprint, steady the pelvis, lift one foot up, and then the other, and do some pistons. This is some nice hip extension. Stay anchored, stay imprinted, and exhale, lower the right foot down. Feel how the front of the thigh is getting longer. Inhale, lower down. Or, inhale, look back up, and then exhale, lower the left. Inhale, back up. Keep those back ribs imprinted. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Again. Exhale down and inhale up. One more set. Let's put one hand on each knee and drop the knees out wide. Let them flop. And then start taking some small circles. Yes, you're going to feel your inner thighs stretching a little bit, um, or depending on how tight and how wide, maybe a lot. But I want you to concentrate on the fact that the front of the thighs, those hip flexors, are getting a break too. So let the hands support the legs as you stir the thighs around the hip socket. And reverse. Keep the legs passive. And then bring the knees in. Feel the lower back is flattened. Engage your inner core. Wrap your belt around. Knit and imprint your ribs. Keep your back flat. Float the arms to the ceiling. Keep the knees together and roll them around to one side, making a circle. Keep your shoulders down, your back ribs imprinted. Come to the center and reverse the circle. And again, reverse. And reverse. Let's do one more each direction. Keep the shoulders relaxed, the back ribs down. Then draw the knees into the chest with the hands again. Lengthen the back of the neck. And we're going to go to a neutral tabletop. If you want something behind your head, you can put it back in there. We're going to um, go to our hundred. We'll work with the legs externally rotated. If your front thighs are really tight and this causes some um, problems in your quadriceps, then I, you can alternately go from parallel to external rotation and back and forth. So let's find our neutral inner core, pelvic floor belt, knit and imprint the wrist. Lift the head, press the hands down, extend the legs out. And then we're going to rotate out in the socket so that the heels are touching and the thigh bones are rolled out. Again, if this gives you problems, just come to parallel and alternately come in and out. 
So if you can stay in the rotation, stay in the abdominal rotation. Exhale for five pulses of the arms. And inhale for five. Exhale. And inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And inhale. Exhale for five. And inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Keep the chin into the chest. Exhale. Inhale. One more set. Exhale. Inhale. Rotate the legs back to parallel. Bend your knees. Lower your head. Give your knees a little hug. Relax the neck. Now we're going to roll into a twist. Dropping the knees over to the left side. And feel the gentle stretch in the outside of the right hip. Relax the right shoulder. Take a couple slow breaths there. And then come to the center. And bring the knees over to the right side. And feel the stretch in the left hip. Relax the left arm. Slow breaths. And then come to the back again, bring both knees into the chest, rock them a little bit from side to side. Then lift your feet as high as your knees, find your neutral tabletop, engage the inner core, knit and imprint your ribs, stable lower back as you lower the right foot and keep it down, and the left foot and keep it down. And pause and relax a moment. So we're going to work with some more hip extension and external rotation. Engage the inner core and then tilt the pelvis to flatten the back, knit and imprint the ribs. Keeping your back flat, slide your right heel away until your right leg is straight out on the floor. I want you to take your hands up and feel your ribs and your hips and then point the right toes, externally rotate the right leg. Remember we want to move the leg, not the pelvis. Lift the leg about six inches, and then let's do some pulses here in external rotation. Keep your lower back flat. And do another set of five. And one more set of five. Keeping the back flat, externally rotating. And then lower down. Come into parallel. You're still in your flat back. Slide the heel back into place. Keep your flat back. And then slide the left heel away until the left leg is straight. Pelvis is steady, point the toes, pelvis is steady in the flat back position. Lift the, uh, externally rotate the leg, lift the foot about six inches, and we'll do three sets of five pulses. In external rotation, back is flat. And then come to parallel, lower the foot down, and slide the heel back in, and pause and relax in neutral. Okay, now we're going to turn to the stomach and just um, explore the difference between hip extension and spine extension. Um, you know, in real life, often if we were going to extend the hips for some reason, we would also extend the spine. Um, but I want to separate those two elements out. I'm going to lie on our front. Arms down at the sides to begin, legs close together. We're going to begin with um, the locus, and here we are going to do both a spinal and hip extension, so you can feel what's going on when they're all working, and we're going to kind of subtract out the spinal extension. 
So find your inner core, your pelvic floor, your belt, knit your ribs in, squeeze the legs together, use an exhale and lift everything up. And still feel everything at the back of the body, the back thighs, the buttocks, the lower back, the upper back, everything is engaged. And lower back down. Let it all relax, please, it's important. And then we're gonna set it up again. Inner core, ribs slide together, and everything up. So feel the whole back of the body engaging. See if you can feel your back thighs, your buttocks, your lower back, upper back, and then lower down. Let it all relax. One more time. Engage, inner core, glide the ribs together, lift everything up. And then relax. Everything soften. Okay, we're gonna go into a, a child's pose for a moment to stretch out those spinal erectors, the muscles, especially in the lower back. So I want you to go into the next exercise without them um, contracted. So we'll come back out onto the stomach. This time we're gonna place our hands underneath our hip points, so at the front of the pelvis, so that one hip point is directly into each palm. Let the legs be just a little separated. Upper body relaxed. If your neck isn't comfortable, put a little folded towel underneath the forehead. So take a moment and feel how each hip is sinking into its, its palm equally like you've got a scale and you're gonna put equal weight into both hands. Relax everything as much as you can. Then we're gonna try finding some pure hip extension without spinal extension. So find your inner core, pull up pelvic floor, wrap the belt. This is gonna be a very small movement. Uh, just think of your right thigh beginning to unweight from the mat. If as soon as you do that, you feel pressure down into your right hip, then you're going to need to get more of your transversus working. Think of that wrapping around. And then we're going to unweight and just let the leg hover maybe half an inch, tiny bit of lift, lift off, off of the floor and lower back down. And I'd like you to observe the muscles in the buttocks and legs and also the lower back. So re-anchor, find that wrap around of the transversus and lift the left, try to see even on the front of the hips. See if you can feel the butt and leg working without the lower back contracting. It's tricky. Let everything relax in between. Re-engage. Think about that whole wrapping around of the transversus, that it comes really all the way around, so it's stabilizing the spine. And float one leg up. It's not coming high. And lower it back down. So as you move off the floor and back onto the floor, we don't want to have any shifting from side to side in the front of the pelvis. Let's do each leg one more time. Keep even weight on both legs, or both hip points. Unweight the leg, wrapping your um, belt around really strong. You can move the leg without engaging the back. And last one. And then release. Okay, now, Take the legs a little wider, relax the legs, extend your arms forward. Let's see if we can do some thoracic extension, this time without the hip extensors working. So now we're gonna find the inner core, see if you can use the pelvic floor and your belt without squeezing the buttocks and engaging the thighs. Keep your arms down, slide your ribs together and float the breastbone just up a little bit off the floor. Imagine the legs just dangling there. So you've got the core muscles, but you're not using your hip extensors. And lower back down. And we like to feel this work a lot more between the shoulder blades than down in the lower back. So keep it small. Again, a subtle exercise. Inner core, ribs glide together, raise the chest and the head. Feel the upper back muscles working. Try to keep your legs and buttocks relaxed. And then release down. Notice if you need to let them go, then of course you know they engage, soften. At least start with them soft. Once again, inner core, slide the ribs, float the chest, feel the upper back muscles, so we're way up between the shoulder blades. 
relax the legs and then release back down. And let's go into a child's pose again. Stretch your back out. If child's pose is not good for you, you can always turn on your stomach and hug your knees in. Now I'm going to turn to the side. We'll lie on our left side first. We're going to begin with the knees comfortably bent here. This is called hook lying position. Um, it's 45 degree hip flexion that's going on here. Um, so just an easy position where the knees are forward and your feet are lined up underneath your sit bones. I'm going to pay attention to the obliques for a moment. Again, we're going to use them and then try to subtract them. So take the right hand on the right waist, soften the belly. Picture the internal organs dropping down to the floor. And we'll do an organ lift with your exhale. Lift the internal organs up off the floor and towards the ceiling. Observe the waist engaging and then soften and relax. Let the internal organs settle back down into the flow of gravity. Relax the belly. Go ahead and let the belly button droop. And begin. Inhale. Exhale. And again, lift the organs up off of the floor. Think of them going towards the ceiling. Feel the tone coming into the right waist. And then soften that. Release. Let it go completely. Once more, organs are settling down into the flow of gravity. Inhale and exhale, lift them up. And then maintain and take an inhale with your organs lifted. And renew the lift of the organs as you exhale, then straighten your legs out. Make sure that the feet are a little forward of the hips. Tilt your pelvis slightly forward so that your right hip is forward. We're gonna go to our side hip series. So find the inner core in addition to the organ lift. We'll get the pelvic floor, the belt, and the organ lift going. And then we're gonna lift both legs up. You can take your fingertips onto the mat in front of you if you want. Feel your steadiness there. So feel the relationship between the hips and the ribs, the belly button pulling to the spine. Top leg up and down five times. Neck and shoulders relaxed. Bottom leg down and up five times. We're gonna leave the bottom leg down for our hip extension. Pull the ribs in and reach your top leg behind you. So feel how the buttocks working and the front of the thigh is extending and then bring the leg forward. There's hip flexion. Try not to have your pelvis and spine adjust to that. They make it nice and small. If you feel your hips and your ribs, you wanna keep them in a steady relationship to each other. Helpful to exhale as you go back because pulling the ribs in, increasing the pelvic, the organ lift will help you to reach back with the leg. Inhale forward, exhale back. Keep that organ lift going, keep the pelvis still. Inhale forward, one more time. Come back to the center. Re-engage your organ lift your inner core. Let's do five slow circles and make them a little bit bigger than you usually do. Or at least if you usually have your bottom leg lifted, make them a little bit bigger. And feel how you're going through hip flexion. Hip, we're not talking about abduction today, but we're going away from the center and then towards the back and then reverse into hip extension up and over, nice and slow. You feeling your butt muscles there, yes? Come to the center, re-engage your organ lift, squeeze the bottom thigh up to meet the top thigh, externally rotate so that the heels are touching each other. We're gonna do our side scissors, top leg up, bottom leg down. Now when you come to the center, I want you to really concentrate on the bottom leg lifting up. Stay externally rotated. 
top leg up, bottom leg down, and then pull up with that bottom leg. So you externally rotate it. Scissor line, pump nice and slow. So let's concentrate on the leg that's going up here, and now the leg that's coming up here. Last time, stay in your external rotation. Re-engage your inner core and organ lift. Let's pulse 10 times. Move to parallel. Flex the feet back. Squeeze the toes and point the toes. Fan the toes. Flex back. Squeeze. Point. Fan and flex. One more time. Squeeze. Point. Fan. Flex with the toes open. Reach out. Squeeze the toes and pull back. Open. Reach, squeeze, and pull back. Last one. And release. Let everything relax for a moment. Now we're going to do some internal and external rotation. Lift the top leg. Find your inner core, your organ lift. Internal rotation. And now we're going to use hip extension, stretching the front of the leg to reach the toes back towards the floor behind you with internal rotation. Lift. Roll out, external rotation, and drop the heel down to the front. Point the toes, roll in, feel the front of the thigh stretch as you reach your toes behind. Lift, flex, roll out, the heel goes to the front and turn out. Point, roll in, reach back. Lift, flex, roll out, reach front. Point, roll in, reach back. Flex, roll out, reach front. One more time. And to the center, relax. Okay, we're going to do our side um, push-up. So we'll take the left hand and bring it around to the right waist. Place the right hand on the floor in front. Find your inner core and your organ lift. And push up to straighten the right arm. And then five pulses. Keeping your organ lift engaged, your inner core steady. Going from straight to slightly bent. And do five more. Try to keep that shoulder lifted so you're not collapsing. The shoulder stays down away from the ear. Okay, and then replace the left arm down on the floor. Bend both knees back to that 45 degree position. Relax the neck. Do a little shoulder rehab. External rotation the shoulder joint. The torso is relaxed. And with the right elbow onto the right waist, we'll lift the right hand and then lower it. Roll out in the shoulder and come back down. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Two more sets of five. Make it smooth. If your shoulders are in good shape and this is not a challenge, you can add a one pound weight here. One more set. When you're done, relax. Now I want you to notice your position. We're in that hip flying position. The knees are 45 degree flexion. You want to bring the right hip forward, even a little farther forward than the bottom one. So your right knee might be jutting out uh, just a little farther forward than the left one. Put your hand on your waist. Relax. No organ lift. Keep your waist relaxed. Think about your pelvic floor and then your belt engaging. This should stay relaxed in the waist. Once you've got that set up in the inner core, you can bring your fingertips onto the right hip and you can push the right hip bone just a little into the right fingertips. With your belt nice and snug around the hips, push the right knee just a tiny bit forward and then float the knee up to the ceiling and lower back down. We want to feel this in the butt. So please do five like that, then I'm going to give you another element to focus on. Pause and relax. Now notice, if you're using your left hip a lot, I want you to try to relax that. Use more um, stabilizing of the belt. And also, notice your um, hip crease here. 
If there's a big tendon sticking out, see if you can soften it and get the work more into the back. So wrap that belt around again. And so let's do five more. The mu muscles that we want to emphasize here are in the um, center of the butt. Relaxing the left leg, rolling out and stabilizing. After we've done five, relax completely. Then we're gonna bend the knees and come to 90 degree hip flexion. So this is the one where the knees and the feet are at the front of the mat. Again, we're gonna keep the obliques quiet, no organ lift. Slide the right hip of the pelvis, the right hip point forward so the knees a little forward. Engage the inner core, keep it wrapped. Try to relax the left leg as much as you can. And roll that right leg out in the socket. Still working the butt, we change the muscles slightly that we're working. After you do five, I want you to please stop and relax. Especially relax that left leg. Find the belt again and do five more. See if you can really turn your attention in to the muscles in the buttock that you're using there. Think of rolling the thigh out in the socket rather than lifting your knee and that, see if that makes a difference. Okay. Now, the zero degree hip flexion, where we open the front of the thighs and get the knees underneath the hip joints. Now we're doing external rotation and hip extension at the same time. We're gonna take, place the hand on the hip. For this one, I like to also engage the organ lift so we have a little more support, so we're really wide open there um, in the torso and the inner core, of course. Do five rotations. You should really feel the butt muscles working. Everyone's on board here. Do five and then pause, reset, and do five more. Okay, let's do a hip stretch. Bring your right knee to the floor in front of you. Left hand down onto that knee, and then start opening out into a spinal twist. For this variation, go ahead and let the right shoulder hover if it does. I want you to more concentrate on the stretch you're getting in the hip since we're just working there. Okay, when you're done, hug both knees in. And then we'll go to the other side. Coming into the Pakong position on the right side. Neck and shoulders comfortable. Knees bent, just like a halfway position between all the way bent and all the way straight. Start by relaxing into gravity. Releasing the muscles in the belly, letting the internal organs settle. Feel your waist, it should be soft. And we're going to do an organ lift. As you exhale, lift your organs up off of the floor. Feel them lifting towards the top waist. Don't worry if the first one doesn't feel that dramatic. I think you'll feel them increase as you do the subsequent repetitions. And let it relax. Let the whole right side of the body Relax down into the floor. You were just working in that hip, so make sure that that hip gets a chance to ease out. Inhale, prepare for the organ lift again. And exhale, start at the floor, and then lift your organs up towards the ceiling. Notice the tone that starts to come into the left waist. And then relax it. Release completely, soften. And we'll do it one more time. Exhale, organ lift. Notice that that pulls your belly button towards the ceiling and presses it towards the spine. Feel the tone coming into the top waist. Maintain it and straighten your legs out. You're going to have the feet a little forward of the hips, the left hip a little forward of the bottom hip. Top hand on the top waist or fingertips on the mat. Find your inner core in this position. Re-engage that organ lift. Keep thinking of the organs lifting to the ceiling. Lift both legs up. And then take these slow. Lift the top leg and bring it back down. Nice and slow. Keep paying attention to the organ lift. 
and the wrapping of the belt. Come to the center, reestablish, and then lower the bottom leg and lift it. So we still want to feel the wrapping of the belt and the organ lift. And the last one, leave that bottom leg down. Feel your hips and ribs staying in place. Use your exhale to extend the leg back. See if you can do a hip extension without spinal extension like we practiced on the belly. And then come forward with the leg. The natural impulse here would be to let the ribs jump forward, the shoulders come forward, and the lower spine to compress. Let's see if we can interrupt that. Inhale forward, exhale back. Keep the organ lift going. Stretch long through the front of the thigh. And reach forward and back. Make sure that the ribs and hips are maintaining their stable relationship forward and back. See if you can feel the front, front, front thigh stretching, the buttocks engaging. One more time. Now we know our circles. Nice and slow, and maybe challenge the range of motion a little bit since your bottom leg is down. And make them a little bit bigger and feel how the hip is moving through a little flexion, extension, and then when you go to the ceiling, that's abduction. Five one way, and then we'll go the other way. Keep your organ lift going. Keep your belt wrapping around. Come to the center, reset the inner core, the organ lift, bottom leg up, external rotation with both legs, heels are together, and then we're going up with the top leg and down with the bottom. And when you come back to the center, emphasize the lift of the bottom leg. So you're getting some range of motion there. Then come to the center, stay turned out, 10 little pulses. And rotate to parallel, flex both feet back and squeeze the toes. Point the toes, fan the toes and flex back. Squeeze, point, fan and flex. Squeeze, point, fan and flex. And then reverse it, reach, squeeze the toes and pull back. Open the toes, reach, squeeze and pull back. Last one. And then release the legs down. Relax and reset. Inner core, organ lift. Lift the top leg. We're going to point the toes, roll the thigh in, and then extend the front of the hip by reaching the toes towards the floor behind. Lift, flex, external rotation, heel to the front. Point, roll in, toes to the back. Flex, roll out, heel to the front. Point, roll in, reach back with the toes. Flex, roll out, heel to the front. Two more times. And then relax the leg down. Take a moment. And we'll set up for our side push-ups. Right hand comes around to the left waist. Left hand in the floor, on the floor in front of you. Inner core, organ lift. Push to the left arm is straight. And then keep your shoulder pulled down away from the ear as you do five little pulses. Reset the core. And do five more. And then release the right arm down to the floor. Rest your arm down on your ear again. Bend the knees, 45 degree hip flexion. Left elbow on the left waist. Relax the neck and shoulders. And externally rotate the left arm in the socket. So the emphasis is on the lift. You can come a little bit below hip waist or waist height on the way down, but the emphasis is on the lift up. Rolling the arm out in the socket. That should feel good, hopefully after that arm work. Three sets of five.
and then settle down into this position for a moment. Let the belly soften. Feel your hand on your waist. Without getting the tone to come back into the waist, engage the pelvic floor. Wrap the belt around. This is quite different from the organ lift. Keep that soft and then draw the left hip a little forward and roll the left thigh out in the socket and bring it back down. You want to work in the buttock of the left side and keep that belt snug around your hips. Think of the bone rolling out in the socket. After you've done five, I'd like you to please reset inner core and pelvic floor, relax the right leg and do five more. And if you feel a lot of work in that front hip crease, see if you can push the knee slightly forward and wrap that belt around a little bit more. When we've done that second set of five, let everything relax. And then 90 degree flexion at the hip. Knees and feet at the front of the mat. Again, draw the left hip slightly forward, so your left knee might jut jut slightly over the right. Keep the organ lift passive. Find your belt and your pelvic floor. Push the left leg slightly forward to begin your roll out. And do five external rotation of the left thigh and the left socket, feeling the muscle work coming from the back. Pause. Reset. And then do five more. And release. Then let's go to hip extension. This is called zero degree hip flexion or hip extension. Um, find the inner core and the organ lift here. Stabilize the relationship between the ribs and, ribs and the hip and roll out in the socket five times. So if you reach around and feel, you're gonna feel the buttock muscles really working. Reset and do five more. Then relax. And we're gonna drop the left knee onto the floor in front. Right hand onto the left knee. And twist over to the left side, but again, it doesn't matter if the left shoulder is hovering. I want you to concentrate on the stretch you're getting in your hip this time. Full breath. And then come on to the back, bring the knees into the chest. Relax the neck. Let's place the feet down on the floor. And engage the inner core, knit and imprint the ribs, and raise the right foot up to the left knee. We are going to get to a um, hip stretch, but we're going to do a couple things first. So we'll start with the muffin tops, bring the left hand behind the head, press the right arm down on the floor, settle the back of the pelvis, engage the inner core, feel your ribs knit together, and then notice the pull of the ribs from the left hip down to the right back pocket, and then lift up on that diagonal. Inhale, lower down. And exhale, lift on that diagonal, left armpit to right knee. Exhale, up and over, and inhale down. Exhale, up and over, inhale down. Do another set of five. Last one, stay up, do 10 little pulses. Remember, armpit towards the knee, not elbow. And lower down with the head. Take your arm out. We're going to keep the um, foot up where it is. We're going to try a pelvic lift on one leg. So we're really going to work that left hamstring. 
Engage the inner core, your right ankle still up on the left knee. Feel your hips and your ribs. You want to keep that relationship um, stable. And use an exhale, lift up. So you're just on your left leg. See if you can balance the pelvis. Feel the work at the back of the left hip, left uh, buttock and left leg. And lower back down. Do it four more times. Steady inner core, ribs knitting and imprinting. And come up. Feeling the left leg working. And lower it back down. And once again, lift. And lower. Now that leg's going to love the stretch. So we'll lift the left foot off the floor. Hold behind the back of the left thigh, balanced in the middle of the pelvis. Extend the left leg up to the ceiling. And then bend the knee, lower back down. And stretch up. Stretch the hamstring. And bend. One more time, stretch up. And bend, and now we're going to stretch the right hip. So settle into your comfortable piriformis stretch. If you want to keep the hamstring lifted, you can. That's up to you. Whatever version of the piriformis stretch you like. Relax the shoulders. We're stretching the right hip here. Right, right butt. Dropping the shoulders, relax the neck and the face. Stay even on the back of the pelvis. Try not to rock over to the right hip. We've got about 30 more seconds, so if you want to intensify it, pull in a little bit. Or you can push your right knee away with your right hand. Or you might like to cross the leg a little bit farther. And then we're going to back away, releasing the left foot and placing the right foot on the floor. Take a moment in the constructive rest. And then bring the left ankle to the right knee. We're going to re uh, repeat that whole series. So we'll start with the right hand behind the head for the muffin top. Left arm relaxed at your side. Pelvis stabilized. Feel the pull from the right armpit towards the left back pocket, and then lift up on the diagonal. Right armpit reaching towards the left knee. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, up and over. Reach with the armpit. Melt the elbow. Exhale, up and over. And inhale, down. Make sure you're reaching the armpit towards the knee, not vice versa. For five more. On the last one, stay up, do 10 little pulses. And release the head down, bring the arm out. Stay at the back of the pelvis. We're gonna do those one-legged pelvic lifts. So anchor the inner core, knit and imprint your ribs, and then press into the right foot and lift your hips. Try to keep the pelvis even as you come up. And lower back down. Please keep supporting behind your back too. You want the, that belt to wrap all the way around. Push up. And come back down. One more time. Exhale up. And inhale down. And then we'll lift the right foot up. Hold behind the back of the right thigh and stretch the right leg. Stretching the hamstring, and then bend the knee, and lift up, stretch the back of the leg, and bend it one more time, 
and then release. And now bring your attention to the left buttock. Relax the neck and shoulders. Support the stretch however you like. Your back can go flat here. Make sure that the neck is not being strained. You can support something behind your head if you like. Shoulders drop down. Face relaxed. Breathe slowly. Even at the back of the pelvis so we're not rocking to the left side. About 30 seconds left, so intensify it if you want. You can pull the right leg in closer, push the left knee away farther, cross the foot a little bit farther. Keep breathing and relaxing the upper body. Bring both knees into your chest. Give them a little hug. Lower one foot and then the other. We're going to stretch both legs out long. Do a modified roll up. We're going to stretch our back as we go. We're going to stick, take the hands on the outside of the thighs. Engage the inner core. Tilt the pelvis so your back is flat. And it can imprint the ribs so your back is even flatter. Scoop the belly button in. Tuck your chin. And slide your hands along your outer thighs as you come slowly up. Come very slowly up. And then tilt forward slightly. Scratching the hamstrings again, relaxing the neck and shoulders. Then sit up. We're going to do one more hip extension. Come to stand on your knees. Place the hands on the pelvis. I'm going to bring the left foot forward, so we have a 90 degree angle at the left knee. We're beginning in neutral. We're not lunging. We're just going to tuck the pelvis. So find the inner core. Tilt your tail between your legs. And then feel the stretch coming into the front of the right thigh. Maintain it for a moment. And then release back to neutral. And again, inner core. Then tilt the pelvis. Feel the stretch at the front of the right thigh. Make sure the chest stays open. And release. One more time. Support and then tilt. And release. Come back onto both knees. Bring the right foot forward, 90 degree angle at the right knee. Neutral spine to begin, inner core. Then tilt the pelvis to stretch the front of the left thigh. Chest stays open. And release. And again, pelvic floor, belt, then tilt. One more time, pelvic floor, belt, tilt, stretch that front left thigh, and release. I'm going to bring the um, right foot back, anchor in the core, finding the inner core and the wrap of the ribs, and then see if you can come up without your hands, bringing one foot forward and then the other. Come and stand tall, lifted, balance evenly on each foot, tall through both legs, lengthen through the spine at the crown of the head, shoulders dropped and relaxed, chin slightly down, ears retracted towards the wall behind you. Now without letting your ribs jut forward and your butt stick out, keeping your neutral spine, 
Roll the arms out in the sockets. Open the front of the chest. And relax. Stand tall again. Do it again, supporting from the pelvic floor, the belt, the wrap up the ribs. Roll out. Uh, roll the arms out. And then relax. And one more time. And relax. So standing tall includes hip extension here and um, upper thoracic extension. This is what usually makes us get short. We get compressed this way. So we need to keep these front hips long and of course the upper back strong. Okay, that'll do it. So I've done my side kicks every day. Anybody else? Um, yeah, just curious if that feels any different to you. All right. Thanks. Hey, Victor. Hey, Liza. Take care. Bye-bye.